Some suffering is too difficult to understand, but we have to try anyway. Let's try it now. Imagine you are a 12 year old girl coming home, expecting to be greeted by your family as you come through the door. But instead, you see your mother, father, and little sister on the kitchen floor bleeding to death right in front of you. There is nowhere to run no one to turn to, and all around you there is only screaming and chaos as you are left crying, scared, and confused. You're too young to understand this, that you and your family are a minority in a country that hates you, that hunts you, and will never stop. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm here to talk to you about the Rohingya people, a Muslim minority in Myanmar. First, I want to give some background information on the subject, and then I will provide some possible solutions to the problem. So who are the Rohingya? The Rohingya is a Muslim minority of roughly one million people. They are not recognized as one of the ethnic groups in Myanmar and are considered as illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. However, Bangladesh does not see them as their people causing them to be homeless and to be treated like foreigners no matter where they seek shelter. Though many Rohingya have lived their entire lives in Myanmar and can trace family roots back centuries, they're still seen as intruders from across the border. The president of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi, not only refuses to give them citizenship, forcing them to be stateless, but they also aren't allowed to go to school or to make any money. And the land they live on can be taken away at any given time. They live in refugee camps on the border of Myanmar and Bangladesh without a home or any hope. The camps they live in are in terrible conditions without food or water, and no other country is able or willing to take them in, which means that most Rohingya are starving to death on the inside. Since the Rohingya are Muslim and the rest of the country is Buddhist, the population of Myanmar harbors a deep hatred for the Rohingya. And they show that hatred through raids every couple of days that leave people slaughtered by the hundreds. In Rohingya refugee camps, violence, disease, trafficking, and murder runs rampant. When a Rohingya goes out in the night to the washroom, the odds are that they will be raped or murdered before they return to their tent. 240,000 of the Rohingya are just children. These people are desperate, with no one to turn to, no one to listen, and yet their cries are neither a priority nor a focus for the rest of the world. No one should have to live this way. So how do we fix this? I will propose four solutions under the acronym HOME. H for hope, O for organize, M for mobilize, and E for engage. The first solution I propose is H for hope. This might seem simple, but is nonetheless incredibly profound in its impact. The Rohingya believe that they are forgotten. Video broadcasts from camps show a group of people who think that the world does not see them or hear their cries for help. The moment that we raise awareness for this problem, that we tell people through social media and through word of mouth that the Rohingya exist, they matter and they need our help, we send a powerful message that the Rohingya are not forgotten because we are here and we won't let their suffering go unhelped. The second solution I propose is O, for organize. Volunteers and doctors that go to Myanmar to lend a hand are not communicating with each other to make sure that everything is carried out in an organized manner. The UN needs to begin to coordinate efforts and have volunteers from different organizations and NGOs working together to help fix problems faster. This leads to my third solution, which is M, for mobilize. We have to mobilize our governments to care about the issue by sending letters to elected representatives 
by pressuring politicians at rallies and during election time to care, we can tell them that we need them to step up to the plate and help out. They will be forced to join global accords with the Bangladesh and Myanmar government to band together to create relief funds and better camp conditions, to mobilize a military force to protect ordinary people from the dangers of being a Rohingya in Myanmar. Myanmar must know that their treatment of the Rohingya is not acceptable and that the rest of the world will not stand for it. Finally, E for engage. We can't just wait for governments to take a stand. We need to engage with the Rohingya ourselves, and we can. By sending money and resources through care packages to the Rohingya, we can ensure that they have some relief from the horrors of food and supply shortage. By donating money to international organizations like the World Health Organization, Doctors Without Borders, Amnesty International, and local NGOs in the area, we can help improve the sufferings of millions of men, women, and children who need our help. Today, I've talked about the terrifying crisis that the people in Rohingya have to face every single day. The Rohingya people cannot and will not stand alone. We must do everything we can so that years from now, we won't look back and mourn the deaths of millions of people who needed our help to survive. Thank you.